In this lesson, we will learn about what is a data source, how we can utilize it within SQL Server 2012, as well as how to create a data source. So effectively, I'm gonna come over here to my SQL Server Management Studio. I already have it open, and I'm gonna expand on databases. Then I'm gonna to navigate to the AdventureWorks DW2008 R2 database. So first of all, let's talk about what is a data source. It is pretty much exactly as it says. It is a source of data that you're gonna extract information from and bring it into some sort of ETL process, which would be an extract, transform, and load, probably created through some sort of SSIS package, transform the data, and then load it into a destination. So in a data warehousing environment, typically when we talk about a data source, we're probably bringing data in from some sort of OLTP environment, some sort of online transaction processing environment, bringing it in, modifying it, summarizing it, grouping it all together, and then placing it actually into our data warehouse. So we've got a couple of different things going on here. First of all, we have the data source, which will be the SQL Server Management Studio. We're going to be dealing with the data source of AdventureWorks DW2008 R2. And I'm also going to come over here to my start menu, and I'm going to open up SQL Server Data Tools. SQL Server Data Tools will be the package that we're going to use to actually do our transformations and our loads. So we've got two things to work with. Number one is the data source, which we are dealing with on the SQL Server Management Studio. And then to actually transform the data and manipulate the data, we'll be looking at Microsoft Visual Studio. In 2008, this was referred to as BIDS. And we can see in our Visual Studio, I have a toolbox over here. In the middle here, I would have a design pane. And then over the right-hand side here that we would not see, but we will see eventually, is the Object Explorer. So this is kind of what the interface of Visual Studio is going to look like. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit this, and we will come back to that a little bit later. Now, the whole point here is for me to create a data source. And the idea here is to place it into something external to SQL Server. For example, we might wanna put it into an Oracle database. We might wanna store the information into a Access database, an Excel database, a Progress database, or a DB2 database. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to AdventureWorks, and I'm gonna do a right mouse click, and I'm gonna come down to tasks. Then I'm gonna come over here and we can see that I have import data, export data, and copy databases. In this particular example, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to import data. Now effectively, the import and the export do about the same thing. The import basically says, okay, I'm going to pull the data from the SQL Server environment and push it into another destination, whereas the export means I'm gonna push the data from SQL Server and input it into another destination. So I'm gonna walk through the wizard here when this is the import data wizard. So let me go ahead and select that. Now it says, welcome to SQL Server import and export wizard. Effectively behind the scenes, this is nothing more than a SQL Server integrated services package or SSIS package. We could create an SSIS package by ourselves, but we might as well go ahead and use the wizard that Microsoft provides us. So let me go ahead and hit next. Now here it's gonna ask me for the data source. And if I select the drop down box here, and I'm going to go ahead and scroll up, and then these are all of the data sources that come standard with the 2012 environment. If there is not one listed, you can certainly go out and purchase one or download one from the specific provider. So we have our ODBC data sources. We have a data source provider for Oracle, one for SQL Server. We have a flat file source, so we can extract data from a flat file. We have a database engine source, an Excel source. And then you can see here that we have a provider for SSAS, which is SQL Server Analysis Services, Data Mining, OLAP, and then we have the SQL Server Native Client 10 and Native Client 11. For our purposes here, we are going to select the data source SQL Server Native Client 11. The server name, if I select the drop down box, will default to my local server, or I can just type in localhost. And that's what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to type in localhost. Now it's going to ask me, do I want to use Windows authentication or SQL Server authentication? Well, for our purposes here, I know I'm using Windows authentication, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that defaulted. But then it's going to ask me, well, what database do you want to connect to? Well, I'm going to hit the drop down box, and I'm going to select the AdventureWorks DW2008 R2 database. Let me go ahead and click Next. Now here, it's allowing me to choose the destination. So I've selected my source. Now, where do I want to store my data to? In our particular case, we are going to store our data. This is just an example of creating a data source. 
and I'm going to take the data to Microsoft Excel. It is going to ask me, well, where do you want to store the data? I'm going to go over here and hit Browse, and I've already created a directory called C Infinite Skills, and I'm going to call this Dim Currency. Now here it will also ask me, do you want to have the first row as column names? I'm going to go ahead and allow that defaulted. So let me click Next. It's going to ask me if I want to copy the data for one or more tables, or do I want to write a specific query? Here I'm going to go ahead and select the option of copying data from a table or view. Let me click Next. At this stage, it is now asking me what tables do I want to extract. So this is just an example of extracting one table, but if I wanted to, I can select three or four different tables. But in this particular example, I only want to extract the data from the currency table. So it says this is the table that you're extracting from, and this is where you're going to place it. I can come over here and click Next. These are the columns that we're going to extract, the currency key, the alternate key, and the currency name. It'll also give me information down here on the bottom that says, hey, if there's an error, what do I want to do? I can fail the process or I can ignore it. So we'll just go ahead and select ignore. Now it says on truncation, what do you want to do? Well, I'm going to go ahead and ignore that as well. Let me go ahead and click next. Now it's going to ask me, what do I want to do? Do I want to run this process right away or do I want to save this as an SSIS package? Well, for our purposes here, we're going to go ahead and run this immediately. So let me click Next and go ahead and finish the project. What's happening is going through the extraction processing, loading the data into that flat file. It went through these several steps. It gave me the message I have 105 rows transferred. Let me go ahead and hit Close. Now I'm going to navigate over to my file system, I'm going to Windows Explorer, open up the directory C colon infinite skills. And then here I have the file dim currency. I already have Microsoft Excel installed on this machine, so let me go ahead and open up dim currency. If I expand this out a little bit, we can see that I've extracted the data from that SQL Server 2012 database and placed it into an Excel spreadsheet by using the import export wizard provided by SQL Server 2012. So this is an example of utilizing a data source, creating a data source, and placing that data in an external data source other than a Microsoft SQL Server 2012 database.